Training Module 5.1 Irrigation Management. Aquacrop describes the interaction between crop and soil and in this training module we are going to see the effect of management and more precisely irrigation management. The objective are to know the required irrigation management parameters required by Aquacrop. They differ depending on the irrigation mode. There are four irrigation modes in aqua crop. The first one is actually the absence of irrigation, rain fed agriculture, which is the default mode. In aqua crop, we can ask to determine the net irrigation requirement, which is one of the other modes for irrigation. There is also the evaluation of an existing irrigation schedule. So the user specify when water was applied, what was the quality of the water and the quantity of the irrigation water. The last mode is to ask help on the software to generate an irrigation schedule. So by specifying a time criteria, the software will determine when to irrigate and by specifying a depth criteria, the amount of water that will be applied will be generated. Let's start with the determination of the net irrigation water requirement. The determination of net irrigation requirements make use of a threshold. It is the allowable root zone depletion. When, due to the absence of rainfall, the irrigation water content drops below that threshold, then a small amount of water will be injected in the root zone to keep the soil water content at that level for that day. At the end of the season, the sum of the added water are the net irrigation requirements. These are net requirements because they does not consider extra water that has to be applied to the field to account for conveyance losses or the uneven distribution application losses of the irrigation water on the field. To run aqua crop in the net irrigation requirement mode, the user need to specify the allowable root zone depletion, which is expressed as a fraction of the readily available water. Rho is zero when the soil water content is at field capacity and 100% at the threshold for stomatal closure. So the allowable root zone depletion is expressed as a percentage of Rho. Let me illustrate the determination of the net irrigation requirements for tomato grown in Foggia on a loamy soil. The tomatoes are planted on the 1st of April and if I run that simulation in the default mode of aqua crop, which is rain fed, we can see that the crop will not survive in the season because the rainfall quickly stopped at the end of April, beginning of May. So there is need to irrigate. Now aqua crop can determine the amount of net irrigation requirements. Therefore I return to the main menu and I click on the irrigation button. By clicking on it, I open the file management menu where I can select an irrigation file or I can change, update the irrigation setting. Let me do it in this way. By clicking here, I can see the different irrigation modes. I'm interested in the determination of the net irrigation water requirement. An aqua crop adds another tab sheet, net irrigation requirement. In this tab sheet, I can set the threshold for the allowable root zone depletion, below which the water content cannot drop. 
for the moment it is put at 50% row, but I can see that this threshold is below the green line. And the green line is a threshold for leaf expansion growth. So it means if I keep my level there, stresses will affect leaf growth expansions. Therefore, I'm going to increase the allowable root zone depletion so that it corresponds with the threshold for leaf expansion growth. I return to the main menu and now I run aquacrop again. Let me advance by 10 days. And now we can see that indeed, as soon as the water content drops below the green line, a small amount of water is injected to keep it at that threshold. So throughout season, aqua crop keeps the soil water content at that level. By looking here at climate and water balance, I can see that the net irrigation requirement is 613.9 millimeters over the season. In the second tab sheet, which is rain at the moment, I can plot one or another parameter. I select another parameter, which is linked with the soil water balance and which is irrigation. I assign it and now I can see the net irrigation requirements throughout the season, which are non-existing at the beginning of the season because there is still enough rainfall, but then throughout the season, the net irrigation requirements are growing. I can see also the daily values of the net irrigation requirements by going here to the numerical output and then request to see the net irrigation requirements. In the last column, the net irrigation requirements are given for each day of the growing season. I can aggregate them on a 10 daily or on a monthly level. A final remark is about the dry yield, which is about 10 tons of tomatoes. It is the dry yield, and to convert it to fresh yield, I need to know the dry matter content of fresh fruits. In FAO, irrigation and drainage paper number 66, a lot of information is available about the crop yield response to water. Chapter 3 deals with aqua crop. A lot of information is there available for the different crops. For tomato, it is in this range of pages. And there we can find that the dry matter content of fresh fruit ranges from 4 to 7%. So, to convert the dry yield of 10 tons per hectare, I divide the 10 tons per hectare by 0 0.07, which is a 7%, and I get 145 tons fresh tomatoes per hectare, which is indeed a very nice yield.